We're back. New program. Whole new life. <laughs> Just had a deload. Feeling a lot better. If you've been watching the last couple vlogs, you can tell the energy, the fatigue was super high. The energy was super low. Still got decent training in, but it was definitely time for a deload. It was more of a reactionary deload than anything because I had to kind of shut down my last uh, week of the last block. But we're done with Calgary Barbell Push Pull Legs. Full review should be out on the channel by now. If not, be on the lookout for it. I thought it was a great program. Really enjoyed it. Um, so if you're looking for something to kind of switch it up, highly recommend. We're moving on. I found a program on Boost Camp. We're back on Boost Camp, which is a great little app. Free. You can find a lot of programs from a lot of influencers. I found one by someone I'd never heard of, but it claims to give you uh, bench PR in six weeks. Avery Bradley, I think, is the guy's name. Sorry if I uh, if I'm missing somebody key in the in the fitness scene. You know, it's hard to keep track of all the all these guys. Um, so we're gonna test that. So today we've got bench press. It is your primary bench press. We're gonna go three by six at about 75%, which I think is 290 for me. 132.5 kilos. So we're gonna warm up here. I feel good coming off of the deload. So hopefully everything feels good. My ankle is still giving me a little bit of trouble, but that shouldn't be a problem on bench. So we'll see how it goes. Using the fancy red bar. Let's see if I remember how to bench. Not bad. Feeling pretty good. No complaints. Maybe a little bit of a uh, tension in my elbow, in my left elbow and tricep. So, something to pay attention to. Oftentimes, I find when I come out of a deload, there's still some aches and pains on that first week, but that's more so like novel stimulus as opposed to like accumulated fatigue over a last training block. So usually what I do is try not to listen to any of the noise from week one of a program, because there's a lot of new variables. But if by week two, those aches or those pains are still there or getting worse, then maybe we start to manipulate some training variables to make it sh so that you can get through the whole program. Again, that's just my personal preference, so people could do it other ways. I'm sure there are some people that hit a week one and say, oh, this isn't gonna work. They know their body maybe a little bit better than me, and then they just go from there, but that's how I do it. So as is tradition, I misread the program. It's not just triples. We've got 125 for three, 135 for three, 145 for two, 150 for one, 155 for one, and then a back down of 135 for between four and six. So it is six sets, but it descends. So that's a little bit, you know, that's a lot of <laughs> intensity for the first week. I mean, a 155 single is, uh, you know, it's a lot. So we'll see. Um, I have in here that my max is 170 kilos. That's my ER, E1RM. Uh, I was fighting between that and 175. I figure 170 gives me space to kind of grow. Um, and that's about where, where I should be. My best triple at the last block, was, I won 155 for three and it was about an RP eight and a half. So I think that tracks 170. So this is our first set, 125 for three. And we'll go from there. This is a more volume than I think I've done in a long, long time. So we shall see how we hold up. I ran into the issue of, um, since I'm starting at one red for my first warm up, not really having a lot of space to warm up. You know, I thought we were gonna get to 135, so I was gonna take this as a warm up, but I think two sets, and then this kind of being like a semi warm up first working set works out. So, 130 next. Major goal with all these is obviously comp specific with every rep. No touch and go. 
Nice. Still good. 140x? 145. Let's stop guessing. It's for a double. You try not to slide as far as far under the bench. Like if you saw in the last uh, set, I'm like so deep under the bench, I think I'm gonna clip the J-Cups. So I'm gonna try and cut that off a little bit. Oh, dealing with too many things at once. Oh, well, I mean, that might as well have been, just forgot how to bench. <laughs> just no leg, leg drive at all. I slid too far back again and got in my head. Single time. Press up kind of worked itself out, which is what I thought would happen. Love it when I'm right. And I'm not actually hurt. All right, don't slide back. There you go, much better. Pretty good. So already a little bit of an issue. Issue is the wrong word, but something that I think should be clarified in these types of programs. When you're given a rep range at a percentage, so this is four to six reps at 80%. That's great, but I need to know, should I be pushing to RB9, 10 to get to six? Or is there a rep range or an RPE prescription here because we're gonna to continue to progress throughout these six weeks. That's what I think a lot of people miss is, sure, percentage-based training is great, but if you're gonna give me a percentage and then you're gonna give me a rep range, I need to know within that rep range where I should be aiming for, or I'm just kind of beating my head against the wall. Like if I max out six, but it's an RPE 10 in week one, uh, where do I go from there, you know? So, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll see. I'll probably try and keep it at like an eight, but who knows? <laughs> Cut it off at five. Kind of split the difference and hope that's good enough. And then I guess work towards, we'll know next week because if it's 80% again, between four and six reps, then the intention is probably max it out or get to the top end of the, that rep, rep range. But if the total load goes up, it's hard to really track progress at that point. Cause it's like, oh, I hit five at 130. Next week it's 85% and it's, you know, 140 and I hit five again, okay, cool, but if I hit four, it's kinda wishy-washy. So I like more, I don't care what you use, percentage, RPE, whatever, but I want it to be concrete week to week so that you can actually track if you are getting stronger or have at least a modicum of certainty that you are getting stronger because the absolute load is going up at a certain difficulty level. So that's all I'll say. Done with bench, accessories, next. 
But I'm already going off program. I mean, would it, would it be me if I didn't? But the program calls for superset bench and band pull aparts. Didn't really love that. I wanted to really just focus in on bench. So what I'm gonna do is superset band pull aparts and uh, face pulls. So between 15 and 20 there, between 10 and 12 here. It's a light band. I think it's only like 30 pounds. So nothing too crazy. And then we'll probably do, I don't know, 120 on that. We'll see how we feel. So here we go. When I'm doing band pull parts, I like to mimic my arch as much as possible. So you'll see how I set up here. Just like that. Into my arch and then pull. Not just a warm-up. Pretty good overloading movement as well. And I'm gonna take the inside handles. I think I'm gonna like that. It's a little bit more rear delt work than I had been doing. But like I said, the, the last time I did face pulls, I like to do it at a little bit of a decline so that I pull up towards my forehead so that I don't just get uh, the pull, I also get the rotation, which has been a problem area for me in the past. So if you're dealing with rotation issues, either internal, external, whatever, try that. Build strength in the range of motion. We got seal rows next, dumbbell seal rows. So if you've never seen those before, I don't know if you can see my head, but you're bracing your chest against a bench like this, dumbbells, basically very similar to the T-bar, chest board T-bar row that we've been doing, but it's dumbbells. Um, because of that, I'm not gonna have the mic on because I don't wanna crush it, but I just wanted to explain to you what we're doing. So this is our first back movement. I'm excited, I haven't done these in a long, long time, so we'll see where we're at. Honestly, might just uh, do the T-bar. This platform is so thin, I keep pinching my nipples <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the bench, and every time I pull up, the dumbbells are too big, I hit the thing. I hate movements where you're thinking about everything except for the movement itself. So I'm trying to like manipulate myself to make sure that I don't bounce off the thing, and I don't squeeze my pec too much, and et cetera, et cetera. At a certain point, sometimes you just gotta do the movement, right? But in my mind, I have a perfectly good substitute for this in the T-bar row. So I may just do that instead. I think that's what we'll do. I think that type of thinking demonstrates the value in exposing yourself to a lot of different um, styles of training because that type of thinking for me comes specifically from when I was first starting out, being super into bodybuilding and you know watching RP and watching Chris Bumstead, tra Bumstead train and Ian Valliere train and they always discuss like, is the machine giving me exactly what I want without a lot of periphery? If not, then let me find a machine that does that. Because in bodybuilding, no one's gonna ask what your, what your seal row max was, you know what I mean? So you can use different implements. And I think a lot of powerlifters get stuck. Obviously we've got the three movements that we have to do because that's what we compete in. But in accessories, I feel like we have more freedom. And if the goal is muscle gain, why wouldn't we then take something from the bodybuilding space. So that's that's where my thought process comes. So that's why we switched to the T-bar row. Could be just making excuses, but it's worked for me so far. Much better. You know what I can focus on? My lats, my upper back. You know what I don't have to focus on? Oh, I'm clipping the, the bench every time. There you go. 
come for me in the comments. I dare you. Finished up on the T-bar. Uh, if you've watched the last couple of vlogs, I mean, probably, I mean, I've been doing close grip lap pull downs for 12 weeks. So if you watch any vlogs in the last couple of months, I've been doing close grip. All that to say, I'm switching to wider grip, trying to get a little bit more tempo, uh, more squeeze at the top, more squeeze at the bottom. Again, talking about bodybuilding, that's kind of what I want to mimic. Because there's moments, not that I wasn't doing that with the uh, with the other closer grip lap pull downs, but there's, there were moments where it was weight over everything, which I think there's definitely time for. Like, don't get me wrong, I like that. I think a lot of times we get too much in our head and uh, we don't do enough of that. I got these on backwards, but who cares? Um, and we don't do enough of that. Like, push yourself, actually use some freaking weight. But there's also time for, okay, coming off of a block where we were heavy in the six to eight rep range, now we're going a little bit lighter, a little bit more focused on the squeeze, a little bit more focused on the technique, you know, in the 10 to 12 rep range. So we'll see how this, how this feels. Probably gonna go around 180. And we're going, this is the wide, wide attachment, which I really like. just different enough, right? We're always trying to work against staleness. These are definitely backwards. Always trying to work against, you know, not just mentally, or not just physically, but also mentally. Movements that get stale, you start to, I find, let me not speak for everybody. I find I start to give up a little bit of focus when I've done a movement over and over again, because like, oh, I got this, no worries. I don't even have to focus on it, but that focus is where that little extra percentage of growth comes from in my experience. Just being present in the movement, going through the technique the way that you know you're supposed to, you know. So that's why I'm a proponent of switching things up. All right, my friends, last thing to film today, some shoulder lateral raises. We've got the 20s. Again, going off program, it calls for the cable lateral raises, uh, but it calls for like the Y raises. We don't really have a cable stack that's capable of doing that. So we're just gonna go with the good old dumbbells you know, sometimes you gotta substitute stuff. So that's how it goes. But after that, I'm gonna do some bicep tricep stuff. But like I said, how many times can you film bicep curls? I don't know. So we'll go 10 to 12. Hold it at 10. Just move on, you know. Move forward from there, trying to max this out at 20. Whew. Okay, I'll see you in the car. First day of the new program down. I like it. It is a lot of volume, and I was not uh, sensitized to that, but usually when you're making transitions between programs, either coming out of an intensity block, going to a volume block, or vice versa, that first week is just get your feet wet type stuff, which is why I was kind of shocked at the level of intensity that was prescribed. Um, but you know, in a program like this, which touts its ability to give you a PR in six weeks, you don't really have much room to faff about. <laughs> you kind of have to get to the meat and potatoes almost immediately if you're gonna create that type of stimulus. I don't love programs that, that make these claims like, oh, guaranteed PR, and maybe it doesn't say guaranteed PR, but it was marketed as bench press PR program, so I'm going to approach it like that. I don't love programs like that, especially for more intermediate to advanced lifters like myself, like others who have been in the sport for a little while because it sets you up to fail a little bit. And also we should never sacrifice good programming fundamentals for you know, these grandiose claims. We, a program, a good program will help you put weight on your total. Full stop, end of story. It does not matter the time frame. You can go through blocks, you can go through 
months, years even, a good program will set you up to succeed in the sport of powerlifting, a good powerlifting program. And a good bodybuilding program will set you up to put tissue on and succeed in the sport of bodybuilding. If it doesn't, it is not a good program, no matter how it's marketed. So that's my, my programming thought there. I like the exercise selection. I did have to do a lot of substitutions just because the gym that I'm at doesn't have the types of bodybuilding implements that this person wants. Um, but I think the substitutions are good enough that they will still capture the meat and potatoes of what the program is. The main thing that I'm doing the program for is the bench press programming. So I'm not super concerned about the accessories being a little bit off. I don't think that katana tricep extensions are gonna be make or break between me you know, hitting a bench press PR. I think the bench press programming is what's gonna do that. So I will still hit triceps just in different ways. Um, we made it through a couple sets of bicep curls. What I think I'm gonna do is take the bicep and tricep work from today and put it on the leg day that is tomorrow because the leg day is only four exercises. So biceps and triceps, you know, your arms, you don't really have to worry about overly fatiguing yourself systemically on a day. They recover very quickly. And then Wednesday I get a rest day anyway. So I'm gonna experiment with that. I was just running out of gas towards the end of the workout today and just didn't wanna push it and not get great work done on the biceps and the triceps. I really want to grow my arms and so I want to give them a little bit more priority. So it's probably bench press then arms in the level of priority right now. Um, so we're gonna move those to tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. We've, we've made some great leaps and bounds in the past couple of months, bringing new people into the community. Please join our Discord if you want to join a group of people that will help you get stronger. We'd love to have you in there. Ask your questions, post your PRs, all that jazz. It's just a community that's gonna support you and help get you stronger. Thank you so much for watching. Get strong and stay strong.